on a York YK specifically, what do I need to look at to know what's causing the surge, whether it be a low end surge or high end surge? On what screens on the OptiView do I need to focus on? There's a, the screens that are going to do the most for you. Uh, if, if you have a VGD, the VGD screen, which is inside of the compressor screen, so it's a sub menu under the compressor. Granted, you have to be logged into service mode to see some of these. Uh, that screen can help because the VGD, the way that that, that uh, system works in its uh, surge detection, it is able to detect even small surges that may not be necessarily audible yet. They're not an extreme surge, but there's still just enough instability in the diffuser and volute section that it's able to pick that up because how on the YK, how that's detecting it is you have a, uh, a transducer in the discharge line, then you've got your condenser uh, vessel transducers. And it's looking for specifically instability uh, in the, the one on the discharge. So if I'm not mistaken, that transducer, it's a different style. It's not the same style and it's got a faster read rate. And essentially when, when you start to enter into a stall and then surge state, that, that reading will become more erratic. It won't have quite as much stability in its feedback. It'll have this, a lot of, uh, say dips, if you will, and spikes. So it'll become erratic. The worse the condition gets, the more erratic that sensor will read. Then it outputs a, the, the, the stall detection module outputs a, a voltage signal to uh, the main board or the ACC board. And then it's, um, it's able to, it uses that voltage as a detection threshold. So when you go to the compressor or the VGD screen, you see the stall voltage that is the output coming from the stall detection board that's reading that discharge transducer. And then it's, it's determining how close we are, or how much instability there is. So you can think of that, that value as a um, stall detection. So that's really helpful if you're in a, say a, a mild surge condition, it's not too severe, but you're trying to kind of make adjustments as you go, that voltage value can really help you determine if, um, if there's a, an issue somewhere. Now, other than that, your evaporator and condenser screens, and maybe even your system screen, those three, those three are going to be probably the most critical under most surge conditions, because you got to get back to the basics of one, do we have GPM? This goes back to the very first question. Do we have GPM? Do we have proper load? Is our condenser too high? Is the evaporator too low? Where I see YKs struggle the most is in that low load state. So in that lower load, the we we really tend to push the surge, um, the surge line quite heavily, and it's largely because the compressor is trying to ramp itself down as much as it can uh, in terms of speed. So it wants to slow the speed down and the YK is tuned to efficiency to such a degree that it will ride that line really freaking close. And so when you have, when your flows or your load aren't quite right, or your, your temperature entering the heat exchangers just aren't quite right. It's not that hard to push a YK into a surge state compared to, and I'm saying this in compared to some other chillers, uh, the, the, that in my opinion, I have seen be a little more forgiving with the way that they they adjust to their surge curve. So yes, start with those basic screens. You need to know what your temperature values are and you can use that VGD screen if it exists. If you don't have one, then it's, it's not gonna be that, you know, it's not there to be helpful to begin with. A lot of surging does come down to, is your flow right? Is your load right on your evaporator? You're not running too high on the condenser um because and then is your charge where it needs to be now you put all these factors together let's say all these things were perfect okay you had perfect gpms you had a perfect charge which you can verify through the sight glasses and stuff and get a pretty good feel for it the evaporator if everything is charged correctly and running right the evaporator should be right at about half sight glass 
and your uh, condenser sight glass should be about somewhere between one third to one half if everything is charged and tuned and running smooth those are about the the standard operating levels that the factory would expect that machine to be able to do so all of that is correct then we get into a whole nother more challenging side of that conversation you could have a issue at the impeller especially if you've had a major surging you could have had some touchdowns that could tear up some of the impeller you could have uh but in by touchdown i mean the impeller actually making uh contact with the interior walls of the compressor so that's going to that shaves off some of your aluminum in in terms of the impeller itself starting to get tore up uh the, if the impeller starts to get damaged it it will struggle to maintain lift even though the conditions should be right you've got proper gpm you've got a stable load condition refrigerants in the right condition like all of that set then you then you have to start asking about okay what what internal compressor issues do we have um that yeah that's the next phase of that of that troubleshoot if you if you're not already in chiller academy i'd really encourage you to go check it out just think about it right uh, this is what i do full time i i've i've committed i've stepped out of the field committed my career to this going forward this is what i've always wanted to do and to be able to educate help others and grow and help this industry take step steps forward um, so chilleracademy.com like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there we've got a community page uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's what I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can, uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, you all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 